Welcome to the second half of TVC Breakfast this Tuesday. Nigeria and India have officially signed three memoranda of understanding focused on strengthening cooperation between both nations. These agreements include strategic partnerships that emphasize enhanced collaboration across various sectors, including the economy, defense, health, and food security. During bilateral discussions, these talks, that is, the leaders agreed to collaborate more closely on counterterrorism, maritime security, and intelligence sharing. In light of the increasing threats in the Gulf of Guinea, as well as the Indian Ocean, India and Nigeria also committed to coordinated efforts to protect maritime trade routes and combat piracy. Additionally, they expressed support for a zero-tolerance policy towards terrorism and advocated for the adoption of the Comprehensive Convention on International Terrorism within the UN framework. They emphasized the implementation of UN General Assembly and UN Security Council resolutions aimed at countering terrorism and violent extremism. Joining us via Zoom from the U.S. is security expert and public affairs analyst, Dennis Amakre. Good morning, Mr. Amakre. Welcome to the program. Good morning. Good morning for having me here. Indeed. Good to see you. Welcome again. So what were your takeaways from uh, the uh, Narendra Modi visit to Nigeria, especially in terms of tackling these growing th uh, terrorism threats? Uh, well, I think, uh, in fact, when I saw the visit, you know, I was very, very happy, you know, because uh, this is where we would have gone for a long time. Nigeria and India has a very, very similar historical background. We were all colonies of the British government. And then, of course, as we grow, um, we have had... Um, all kinds of cultural and uh, business exchange. Um, and, uh, you know, a lot of Indian uh, companies in Nigeria. And um, it was a place that um, uh, Nigerians just even like to go, you know. And uh, after listening to it, um, seeing that visit, I feel that I think we're trying to get on the right path. Mm. And if we hold this particular uh, relationship very strongly, then we should be able to at least forge ahead. I was listening to your uh, last guest in the studio, mm. and um, I think uh, he said it all. But there are a lot, a lot. We, in fact, a secured society that India and Nigeria wants to forge ahead right now, you know, is, is going to be on the basis of that electoral system that we have, uh, that would give us, if we can follow the uh, uh, position of India, uh, 1.45 billion people who can do an election in one or two days and it's over. And then of course, Nigeria, 234.5 million, million people. And uh, we are not able to get it right. You know, after our election, litigation look at the american uh, election that just just concluded within 10 hours everything was okay and the loser has already congratulated the winner and uh, life goes on you know transition is taking place you know so this is the landmark this is the benchmark where we want to find ourselves in nigeria and uh, looking at it uh, about uh, the war against insecurity and how both nations are looking to jointly tackle this, what are the major uh, advanced form of security or mechanisms that you think India is likely to transfer to Nigeria and also uh, the other way around? And how do we also incorporate it into existing systems that we have now? You know, um, Niger like I said, Nigeria and India has had a long uh, relationship. Even security-wise, uh, my younger brother, um, who was in the Navy, uh, I remember, well, he trained in India. Mm -hmm. You know, he trained in India. In fact, till today, most Nigerian naval officers were trained in India, mm -hmm. you know, in the Kerala state. And um, I think that relationship is going on. So, 
In the area of security, I think we should look strongly at training. We'll continue that training that we've had with India. And then, of course, we can look at um, other things like equipment, technology. India is very, very advanced technologically. And in that kind of advancement, I think there is a lot for Nigeria to gain. You know, it may be it in um, uh, defense uh, equipment or other kinds of security equipment. You know, uh, India's security is very, very robust, and we should be able to uh, gain from it. You know, so, and um, if we want to talk about um, that uh, technological um, enhancement, I think uh, instead of trying to go into the western side of uh, acquiring technology, mm -hmm. India can give us even more, you know, more robust or should I say more uh, useful, useful technology to our situation than we can get from um, uh, other western societies. Right. Do you get a sense that, um, you know, this might be a breakthrough uh, in Nigeria's um, security threats? Or have you seen some fruits already germinating from previous Nigeria-India relations, especially uh, in the bid to tackle insecurity in Nigeria? Is this a new inroad that Nigeria is making, or have there been some... Um, you know, fruits on ground already that Nigeria is leveraging on? Uh, yes. Uh, like I told you earlier, I was so happy uh, when I saw the Indian president, um, you know, uh, in Nigeria. Uh, it, it is something that um, I think uh, right now we can start plucking the low-hanging fruits, uh, which is our relationship with them culturally, military military relationship even in defense even in defense there's a lot we can learn from india like i said mm. and um, i think um, this uh, move is one that uh, is very very important that way in fact if we can get our electoral system well then you find out that of course uh, everything will be fine uh, look at india for instance they, they had their election. Mm. There are one point something billion people. But the election was over in 24 hours. You know, how did they do it? We should learn that. Because, and when you look at India very well, you find out that um, their institutions, they have very strong, you know, electoral system, very strong electoral institutions, you know. And I, I'm so particular about the election part of it because if we can get elections straight, then I, I think half of our security uh, problems are, are been cancelled. You know, so if we can get all these, the independent judiciary that exists in India, I think we should find out how do they do it, and then of course the use of technology in in the electoral process, in their defence and security the process, you know, these are the things that I think we should start looking at. Um, uh, I don't want us to drop this ball this time. And uh, the Indian diaspora community is perhaps one of the largest that we have in Nigeria, apart from uh, their contribution to, you know, businesses in the country. And there is also the potential for cultural exchange. How do we leverage on this while also maintaining our personal interest as a country? Uh, I think um, besides the rosy part of the whole thing, we should also be very, very careful. Uh, and uh, our politicians should start, you know, uh, in fact, that's another area. Um, uh, education, you know, society, you know, the society should be well enlightened, public enlightenment on this relationship and of course on our own part and on the part of the indian uh, community that is in nigeria uh, there has been not very very rosy stories coming from uh, some indian entrepreneurs or indian 
companies, the way they treat Nigerians, you know, I have been able to, I was, uh, when I was uh, working in the service in Lagos, uh, we, we, were, we were able to intervene in the situation in, uh, in Nikorodu, where an Indian company almost uh, killed a lot of Nigerians by treating them badly. You know, the safety and security systems were bad in the company, and they locked them up inside the, inside the factory, and there was a fire. And during that fire, a lot of Nigerians lost their lives, you know. Um, we have to try and, uh, um, we, you know, this kind of relationship we're trying to have, it, it should be one that is on equal footing. Um, there is a tendency for Indians to look down on Nigerians, and I think that's an area that we have to address, you know, we have to address that strongly. And then, of course, the cooperation, it has started from the very top level, and that should simmer all the way down. Right. And, um, of course, uh, we are living in times where um, even age-long partners are also developing a nationalistic approach towards their partnership uh, with, um, you know, with countries, um, America, uh, and the likes, uh, you know, first uh, Trump experience, that was uh, propagated. And even now, he has also said this is what he will be doing. It's all, so it seems to be having a ripple effect, so to speak, in our relationships with other countries. Uh, do you see that uh, as also another thing we need to be cautious about while seeking uh, cooperation with India? Oh, yes. Um, remember <laughs> that, uh, in fact, I, I want to say this before we even go into it. Most of the uh, stories you've been hearing about America, Trump, uh, Trump making some statements and stuff like that, they're all fake. Fake news. AI generated news that has been floating all over the place. You know, uh, Trump is not the president of the United States now. You know, there is a president and a vice president who, you know, contested against him. You know, he has won, yes. He can go ahead, the transition is going on. He can go ahead and uh, uh, appoint his cabinet and stuff like that. But uh, for anybody to start uh, um, spreading or disseminating all kinds of fake news about Nigeria, um, all kinds of uh, statements that he made about Nigeria, they're all fake. They're all fake. But at the same time, uh, yes, you you have to understand. I know that a lot of people uh, love Trump because of uh, how the Democrats treated Nigeria. Uh, you know, Nigeria cannot forget that. I think they've not forgotten that. Um, during uh, the, the the days of uh, Obama, uh, who is a, is a black president, and uh, many Nigerians look forward to a very good relationship with him. Uh, but, of course, we, when we went there for, for them to help us in defense, we wanted to buy the Tucano jets, you know. They, they refused to sell it to us. Uh, President Obama refused. His government refused to sell it to us. It was Trump, when Trump came in, that he approved that sales and we bought them, you know. So, yes, we can, you know, have a good relationship with him. But like I said... All our defense kind of arrangements, I think we should start shifting it, shifting it from the West. Because let me tell you, Trump is not there for any help to be given to Africans or any other person. If he's helping anybody outside the United States, it's going to be Europe, you know. But right now, his policies are America-centric, America-centric. To make America great again, Beautiful. That's what he's planning to do. So let us also start thinking, because he cannot leave uh, making America great right. and come and help Nigeria to grow. Now we have a country that looks like us, you know, population-wise, they are very big, bigger than us. Mm. And then, of course, we all went through the British experience, and we have a, common, right. a lot of common things to share, and we can do that. 
hear that. All right. Uh, Mr. Macro, let's put you on hold. Uh, we'll come back uh, for more contributions from your end. You're watching TVC Breakfast. More in a moment. If there are any other issues, please let me know. Thank you, doctor. Now that is a physician consultant. My HMO, Bastion, offers telemedicine, which makes consultations with highly trained doctors to be possible. I got a healthcare plan that's right for me and my family. I have access to top quality healthcare services and facilities. We also get access to over 1,700 hospitals and clinics. Call 0800 Bastion, Bastion Health, the HMO that puts Welcome back to the program. We've been speaking with Dennis Amakri in the United States about expectations uh, as, of course, um, Narendra Modi, the Indian Prime Minister, came visiting uh, just before uh, both he and uh, the, his host, uh, that's President Paul Atinubu, traveled on to Brazil for the ongoing G20 summit. And, uh, of course, the expectation of one of the deliverables from that meeting uh, is that security would be enhanced uh, from mutual intensified partnership between Nigeria and um, India. And so, you know, one of the breakdowns of these expectations for improved security is the Gulf of Guinea, maritime uh, security uh, generally. W what are your thoughts on how things stand now on the Gulf of Guinea um, are we there yet? And, and what should Nigerians be expecting uh, moving forward? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, you see, that is uh, an area that um, it has been a very, very bad um, uh, security problem for uh, Nigeria. The Gulf of Guinea, you know, um, we have a lot of things happening there. Because it is offshore, many people don't understand. Many people don't understand that, you know, number one, a lot of our uh, oil rigs are located in the Gulf of Guinea, offshore, not in the land, you know, and the security of these, um, uh, of these uh, rigs are very, very important. That is where even where some tankers will come and then offload our crude oil and go away. And we don't even know. So there is the necessity to monitor the Gulf of Guinea properly. Number two, one of the most fertile fishing areas in the world is the Gulf of Guinea. That's where fishes come to spawn and then of course People come all the way as far as from China to come and fish. Sometimes you might have seen it in the news where the Nigerian Navy has been able to arrest some of them because they come. That is the breeding ground of fishes, all kinds of things. The best prawn that you see in the highest restaurants in, 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 in New York or in London those prawns are got from, they are special prawns. They are got from the Gulf of Guinea. And these are our own. People are stealing it. We don't know. I, I learned we have a blue economy, you yes. know. And that blue economy, I hope it will kick off and then take care of all this. Now, defense-wise, the Navy, like I told you, have been working with India for a long time. And, of course, India is very, very also familiar with this situation okay. in the uh, Indian Ocean, mm. you know, the situation in the Indian Ocean. So right. if we can share intelligence and we can, of course, work together, you know, uh, get a more robust uh, system in place, I think it will help us, even economically, you know. So uh, these are the kinds of things that uh, could happen. And uh, remember, we are also moving towards into the BRICS you know, mm. uh, the, 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 the BRICS uh, economic block with Brazil, Russia, India, and China, you know, so, and South Africa. So this is the way to go. 
I'm happy that even the president is now in Brazil. Uh, but this, these relationships are the ones that we need, you know, to project for that. And uh, beyond maritime, let's talk about our borders and how we can extend this potential for, you know, proper security across borders to other African nations, uh, especially considering the fact that our president is the chairman of ECOWAS. And you've also mentioned on this platform that some of the major issues we're still having is about our borders and how uh, porous they are in that sense. How do we extend some of the potentials that we will be getting from, you know, this cooperation from India in terms of uh, security to other African nations? Okay, like, uh, yes, that's a very good question. Mm. Um, you see, the borders are one of our biggest problems. Mm. But the way we are looking at it now, we are looking at the northern borders. You mm. know, we are looking at the northern We are forgetting the southern border. And the southern border is the Gulf of Guinea. You know, that is our area that a lot of people are coming in without let or hindrance to come and do whatever they like to do and go away. You know, and then we have, you know, the borders with Cameroon and, and uh, uh, Benin Republic. And these ones are still very porous. The northern one is more porous than ever, you know, and we have to address them. We cannot claim to be doing certain things while, you know, you, you are trying to put a CCTV cameras inside your house, you know, to make sure that uh, when thieves come, you will see them. But your doors are open, your windows are open, all right? That's the situation we find ourselves. So what do you do? Let us get ourselves seriously embedded in technological, you know, usage. Because most borders in the world are monitored by technology. And India is very good about it. Like I said, India is good about it because they monitor the Indian Ocean. It's their ocean. It's named after them too, you know. And uh, they monitor it. Anybody that comes in there or trying to go out, they know. And I think Nigeria, even Nigerian Navy, has been trying to develop that capability, you know, and I think they should strengthen it, whereby, you know, the, the whole Gulf of Guinea is monitored. They should know every ship that comes in there, every merchant ship that comes in there and goes out. And then, of course, we should know the ones that are passing through because technologically you can monitor. You can see them. You can see them. And that is something that we, can, we should be able to do. The northern borders, yes. Number two, after that, is the relationships we are going to keep with our neighbors. Right. You know, Niger, Niger Republic, um, Burkina Faso, uh, Mali, these, these countries had decided to break away from ECOWAS. But I think instead of trying to attack them, we should try and strengthen the kind of relationship we have with them because it's very important, security-wise. And while Nigeria is also, you know, uh, wooing uh, countries such as India, you know, to meet with, uh, you know, the growing challenges uh, back home, how, how much room should uh, the government also give to uh, unconventional uh, methods in enhancing security, such as, you know, um, seeking services from the likes of, um, let me say, Tompolo now, uh, to provide some form of pipeline surveillance, for example, if we want to broaden this kind of um, services, this kind of relationships, uh, do, is, is there room for it while also seeking international partnership? Yes, there is a large room, large room. You know, uh, I, will, I think we've talked about it before here, yeah? where, you know, security to counter security uh, problems in Nigeria needs an all-society approach. We need an all-society approach. That means, besides the military, we also need the non-state actors, private securities like 
Ampolo or whoever you know you've uh, mentioned, um, Asari Dokubo, you know, uh, they, they, he has a he has a, he even has a company that works for government, you know. So these are the things we we have to you know enlarge enlarge that room whereby we get everybody involved. Government alone cannot do it. Where you find out that, of course, um, I've made this analogy before, where we are approaching our security like uh, somebody, a football stadium, where people are playing football. The Nigerian security forces are mm -hmm. fighting against the terrorists, and then the Nigerians are seated around the stadium watching. And in fact, uh, in fact, our own press, sometimes when, when, when the terrorists and Bush are people and kill them, they, they are the ones that even give them the publicity. Remember, one thing that terrorists love is publicity. And they will go ahead and give them the publicity. Oh, terrorist Boko Haram has killed 20 soldiers, and they will be clapping. Nigerians will all be watching, you know, in the stadium but no we want all society approach where everybody gets involved everybody and the way to get involved not everybody is going to carry arms but everybody has a part to play especially in information information supplying information and then of course uh, um, uh, telling the security agencies you know where these people are what they do what are their right. capabilities etc. All right. Dennis and Macri, we thank you very much for your contributions on TVC Breakfast today. Uh, do enjoy your stay uh, in the U.S. Thank you very much for having me.